If you really want to defeat cancer, then eat like you mean it. Again, you chew, you swallow. You're really not thinking about chemicals, but that's what's happening. Those plants that you're chewing and swallowing have powerful chemical structures inside of them that can build up health and reverse disease in your body. And here are just a few examples, um, mostly just to make you impressed that I can say these words so fast. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but so in your turmeric is curcumin. In your green tea is epigallocatechin gallate. In your red grapes and in red wine is resveratrol. Flax seeds and avocado have healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Berries have procyanidins, soy, genistein. Tomatoes have lycopene. Apples have anthocyanidins. And oranges have lemonine. Okay, lemons do too, but, uh, and limes, but oranges have the most. So there you go. You wouldn't know it from the name lemonine. All right, here's the promise. I said I wanted to talk about IGF-1. And boy, do I, because I really want you to get this. IGF-1, it has one mission in life. Grow, everybody. Grow, grow, grow. Super awesome when you're a kid and need to become an adult. And it actually um, turns out we turn over 50 billion cells a day inside our bodies. And thanks to IGF-1, those cells are replaced. But your brain's super smart. And it tells your liver how much IGF-1 you need for today. So once all the tasks of the day are complete, you better hope there isn't an excess of IGF-1 screaming at cells to grow because then grow, grow, they will. Grow fat, grow plaque, grow cancer in the breast, grow that cancer out into the liver, into the lungs, into the brain. Whoa. Someone better slow that IGF-1 down. And it turns out that you're that someone. The only way to get an outrageous elevation in your IGF-1, then screaming at too many other things to grow besides the cells that need to turn over is to consume animal protein. Check this study out. Over 6,000 adults over the age of 50 were followed for 18 years. And in those ages 50 to 65, higher versus lower animal protein levels. Okay, This isn't even higher versus plant-based vegan folk. This is just you eat more meat than I eat. And this led to a 430% increase in cancer death and a 7,300% increase. It's 74 times the, the rate of diabetes. And as they did the analysis, the sub-analysis, IGF-1 emerged as an important moderator of the association between protein consumption and mortality. Since wherever the protein went, IGF-1 was sure to follow. Just like Mary and her little lamb. And that would be especially true if Mary ate her lamb. Okay, notably, no such elevations in IGF-1 happened when the protein was derived from plants, only animals. Okay, speaking of IGF-1, cancer and diabetes, if you could not respond to IGF-1 at all, you would have Laron syndrome and you would be very short, which makes sense since you wouldn't have anyone yelling at you to grow when you were little. But guess what else you wouldn't have? Drum roll, please. Cancer. Not one person with IGF-1 deficiency has ever gotten breast cancer. In fact, only one person with Lerner syndrome in the history of the world ever had cancer. It was ovarian cancer in 2017. It was early stage. She's still alive. Okay, that's astounding. No one with IGF-1 deficiency, Lerner syndrome, ever gets type 2 diabetes. Astounding again, is it not? Clearly, IGF-1 contributes substantially to the causation of all cancer and all type 2 diabetes. It creates that micro environment that's proven to be conducive to breast cancer and it increases breast cancer invasiveness. Women who have high circulating levels of IGF-1 have 38% more estrogen driven breast cancers than low IGF-1. By the way, all these people live in Ecuador. I mean, they could leave, but that's where they are. That's where all the studies happen. Okay. I can tell you, okay, this is, this is one of my favorite studies to talk about. You know why? Because when a woman comes to me and I give her a version of what you've heard so far, but she has breast cancer and she's really wanting to make a, a life change. This is a very teachable light bulb on moment. And she's very receptive. Right. And she hears this and she's like, mm, yeah, but, but doc, look at my body. I've been overweight my whole life. I eat the way I eat and it's just too late for me. I already have breast cancer anyway. 
And that's when I pull this study out. And I'm like, oh, no, sister, listen to this. I can tell you how to lower IGF-1 and how to make more of that IGF-1 binding protein. It's like a body snatcher that takes excess IGF-1 out from circulation. All you have to do is what a group of 50 obese women did. They didn't have cancer, um, but they did this following the Pritikin plan. So they um, first, before they went away to follow the Pritikin plan, the researchers drew their blood and they measured the IGF-1 level and the binding protein. And then they took their blood and they dripped it on a Petri dish full of human breast cancer cells. A few cells died because like they're alive. So their immune system does a little something, something. But then they were sent off. And they go away to follow this, a low fat, high fiber, whole food, plant-based diet with daily exercise classes that were like 30 minutes a day and sauntering. Okay. It wasn't like running half marathons or anything. So they go away and they, they stay away for 12 years. No, no, 12 months, 12 weeks. What? 12 days. Okay. That's not a very long study. They come back 12 days later. They measure the blood again. IGF-1 levels have plummeted. Binding protein has skyrocketed. And oh, oh, wait, look, here, I have a new Petri dish filled with human breast cancer cells. I mean, who doesn't? And let's take this new blood, see what it does. Sprinkle. The majority of breast cancer cells died on the spot. These women had transformed their blood into a cancer killing machine in under two weeks by eating whole food plant-based and moving a little bit more. Okay, I hear you doc, maybe I'll put my cheeseburger down. But on the other hand, I just hear so much about keto and paleo and Atkins and South Beach and I really do love myself and meat. What do you have to say about that? Because people do lose weight and their diabetes can get a little bit better. Huh, doc, doc, okay, hold on. Despite the fact that man in the paleo period didn't actually eat this way, and even though eating meat and dairy leads to planet destruction and climate change and animal cruelty, and um, did you know that it takes 5,000 gallons of water or thereabouts to make one pound, a one pound beef patty? I mean that's ridiculous. There's all this pesticide and antibiotic overuse, the emergence of antibiotic resistant superbugs, because 80% of all antibiotics on planet earth are given to the animals we eat because their conditions are so skanked that they didn't get the antibiotics. Then you would have uh, all your plate filled with pus. And I'm not going to talk at all about how big Aggie accounts for 30% of greenhouse gases and more than all of transportation sources combined and 90% of deforestation releasing 50 billion tons of carbon into the sky leading to climate change, biodiversity loss, ocean dead zones, planet destruction, exacerbation of world hunger, and basically the end of life on this planet. Despite that fact, okay, that animal agriculture is the number one contributor to all of those stated atrocities, I'm not even gonna say that any of that is a reason to avoid low carb, meat-centric diets like keto. (laughs) 